to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Listen to me. Every car you have seen, when you saw it, it saw you too. It passed because it's not your own yet. The office you will later walk in saw you when you saw it. But it's not looking for that version of you. When you watch television and you saw certain leaders standing and you imagine you standing, you were not wrong. But not that version of you. As a man of God, God showed you where you will go in the dream. But it has not come physically because your mind has not arrived there. Anywhere you go by the spirit with your mind, your body must get there. There is no tribal sentiment. There is no political affiliation. There is no prejudice. There is no whatever it is. Please comfort yourself. Everything you see today, don't be under pressure. If at this level, you are still soaking Gary, it's not proof that your faith is not working. It is the law of process. Do it with honor and dignity. While your body is eating Gary, let your mind be eaten with kings. While you are in one room, let your mind be building the estate. While your body is teaching five members, let your mind be building the campground. Will your mind build a campground? Your body will not enter. While you are in hundred level, just wondering and say, oh, this course, don't worry. Let your mind be collecting the PhD for you. Your mind is attending a convocation ceremony of a doctor. Whereas you are here wondering, will I pass this course? For step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Do you know the purpose of dreams and visions? The purpose of dreams and visions is not just to prove you are prophetic. Dreams and visions are spiritual strategies where the Holy Spirit takes your mind to your destiny so that you will see it and returns you back and then your body follows. Some of you seated here right now, you've seen yourself on this stage. Is that true? You've seen yourself ministering. You got up and you casted it. Don't cast it. It's not a lie. But not this version of you. The version of you now will not preach on this stage. Except you are acting drama. But in reality, it may not preach here. It doesn't mean you are not called. So while you stay in the secret place, shakata kabakata, while you are studying and fasting, nobody is seeing you, but you are coming closer to the pulpit. A day will come the justice of God will fish you out of a thousand people it is true it's unnecessary to call the world to see you a system has been designed to make those who are ready seen to be seen this is it this is what God taught me many years ago I would stay and study my Bible and see visions of the nations and I said Lord I believe you I believe you my background notwithstanding the limitations notwithstanding do you know I travel today to places and sometimes when I stand there I begin to I almost fight tears because I saw those places years ago but that version of me as born again as it was could not come there Please, my precious people, hear what I teach you. And it will explain why many people are not moving forward. Because our minds froze. And it's only our bodies that are moving.
the healer you saw is real grow into it the one feeding nations you saw is real grow into it hear me my dear sister the woman of god that you saw in your dream you saw the wives of many jews in this nation and you saw yourself in their midst it's not a lie it's a call of destiny but that version of you will never sit down with the great a day came i had a dream many years ago there were ministers gathered together and i was on stage eating i no, i was somewhere scattered and papa Ia deboye looked at me and spotted me he said come and when i was coming people were frowning what is this small boy coming to do baba is calling what should this boy be doing and then when i got there he was eating on the stage he said kneel down and eat i said no i can't i can't do this i mean i was well trained ah i would not try this he said i'm the one who is telling you eat imagine that i got up and went to redemption camp and i say i'm a man of god i have a track record of sick bodies being healed and all of that and uh, sir i saw you in the dream and because of that where is your dining table how stupid the spirit of god took my mind there to say if you walk with me this will be your destiny many people have seen things in their dreams and died and never got there because their minds remained in their yesterday even if your body goes to tomorrow is where your mind is that is really where you are if you are in tomorrow and your mind is in yesterday you are in yesterday lay hands on your head in one minute and for the next one minute pray in tongues and say in the name of jesus my understanding move forward my knowledge of god my knowledge of life my knowledge of destiny is someone praying pray that man of God that I saw in my visions is the Holy Spirit taking me to destiny I will get there that woman of the spirit that I saw that healing evangelist that I saw now I believe now I know that worshiper that I saw taking the songs of the spirit to the nations you may despise this version of me but there is a version of me that creation cannot ignore hallelujah praise the lord sit down thank you gentlemen god bless you do you understand what i just taught you so number one to measure success your spiritual health number two your level of transformation i am passionate about knowledge not random knowledge not every knowledge you must before you receive knowledge find out what allocation is given to it in terms of the problems it must solve in your destiny there are many spiritual information that are useless to the saints it is pride and carnality that continues to drive people into a body of knowledge that has no applicability to their lives and destiny just because an information is scarce or spiritual or true does not mean it is needed when you are a student and you are studying medicine you may never visit the faculty of arts for anything correct now that does not mean the body of knowledge there is wrong it means as far as the course you are pursuing is concerned knowledge there is unnecessary if you go every day to take lectures for instance in theater arts it's wonderful if you are an artist but if you are a doctor it, it does not matter so we have random accumulating of spiritual knowledge we just go online and any topic we have so many things and that vacillation of knowledge puffs us up to mean that because we have several knowledge we are wise but our results show we are not we must trust god for guided knowledge the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come jesus speaking he said he will guide you truth is something that you must get with guidance Number three, let me hurry up. I guess I'll preach my tonight's message tomorrow.
The third platform to measure success is your health and your physical well-being. It looks very simple, but please pay attention. A body has thou prepared for me, not just a spirit, a body. This body must be prepared to impact a generation. A body has thou prepared. The church is not called the spirit of Christ. The church is called the body of Christ. Satan knew the value of bodies. Even when Moses died, he wanted his body. Bodies are important. Your body is your only legal access to operate in this realm. If you do not have a body or if you lose your body, it's more than just being healthy. You have lost your right to function within this domain. That's the reason why Satan exits men prematurely by doing something to their body. When you have an accident, God forbid, and please, I'm not getting you emotional, but when you have an accident, there is a way that accident can deteriorate your body. Your spirit will no longer stay there and it will have to leave. Is that true? There is a way that your health will break down to a point that your spirit will have to leave. So the spirit does not just stay in the body generically. There is a, a threshold level of health that can allow it to stay there. So when you say, I shall not die but leave, that means you are saying God does not, do, uh, I mean, um, your word says that I shall not die but leave and this body needs to be preserved. When Jesus spoke about worry and stress, he knew what he was saying. It was a system of preserving your body so that you will last. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If I died this morning, I will not be here now. Are you aware that you need to be alive to make an impact? And that to be alive is not just a spiritual issue alone. Your body, it is very important. A body has thou prepared for me. You must commit yourself to being healthy the same way you are committing yourself to being spiritual. It's a commitment you must trust God to make. Say amen. Number four, the fourth platform to measure success is in the area of finances. You're excelling financially. Every time I come around the West, I marvel at the spirit of faith and the grace for territory that is upon this region. When I came in here, I've been here a few times, but it never, it never ceases to dumbfound me. You don't have these kinds of facilities to this degree in the North like that. To have one church, one ministry, own estate, own properties. Let me tell you, you've heard me say that the name of God is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. The name of Jesus is extremely heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set them free let all the nations come and see but we have to lift up that name whoever tells you to ignore your finances in destiny is the one that has destroyed your life listen being successful financially is not an issue of being rich it's an issue of redeeming time Money has nothing to do. It's not the issue of prosperity for the ego. The Bible commands us to redeem time. And one of the ways we redeem time is to have the resources to minimize wastage. Poverty is not about lack of money. It's about the servitude of your time. The highest thing you have in your life is time. Whatever can help you redeem time is an advantage. Listen to me. I will continue to preach this. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. Say hunger. Hunger is the only thing that takes Israel to Egypt. Let me show you a scripture. Never forget it. Genesis 42. Is it projected up here? I'm not sure it is. 
I just wanted to know if they are okay. If it will be projected, I want us to see it if you can really see. Genesis chapter 42, we'll read the first two verses. Otherwise, you just look at your Bible. The Bible talks about Jacob. If you can see it, read it with me. One to read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Everybody say corn in Egypt. There was corn, but the problem was the location. That's not the place to be in, but there's corn there. Then the Bible says, Jacob said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. Verse 2 now. And he said, behold, uh -huh, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. A prophet without corn will still die. Jacob was a prophet. But he said, now we are hungry. We need corn. And Satan programmed the location of corn to be where? Egypt. So you may stand and know God and love God. You may be a prayer warrior until there is a need for your son's school fees. That hunger will start taking you from the secret place to Egypt. Believers must be empowered, but they must be empowered properly. When people understand that this subject of wealth has nothing to do with just being rich, to prove to everybody that I'm poor, that's too small a reason for it. It is a strategy for time redemption. The Bible says, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. It took wealth to make this happen today. Jesus is being glorified in this place, not only on the wings of faith, but on the wings of resources. We are able to amplify this voice to you and to the nations today. When God blesses you, it takes away the temptation of, of the funny things that people do around the pulpit. Is it not when you are hungry that you would think of cheating someone on, on his food? Listen to me. God wants you to be wealthy. But the key is that you prosper even as your soul prospers. That's what Satan does not want. You will have to exchange your soul. So he said, what shall it profit a man? Profit. He's speaking business now. If he gains the whole world and what? Loses his soul. You know you are prospering by your world when your soul is dying while your wealth is growing. When you meet God, he will cause both your soul and your wealth to grow. If your soul is growing and your wealth is not growing, the problem is ignorance. If your wealth is growing and your soul is not growing, the problem is fraternity with this age. But if your soul is growing and your wealth is growing, it's proof that God is the one who is lifting you. The second reason why you need wealth in your life, if I would say very quickly, is because the Bible makes a very interesting statement that God revealed to me recently. Am I wasting your time? Jesus, please hear me. If you're a minister of the gospel, please hear me. Because this is the strategy the devil wants to use and embarrass people these days. Notice that Jesus went about preaching. The moment Jesus started preaching, those who came to him were tax collectors. They came to disgrace him. And they said, you are preaching and you are not paying tax. In other words, you are not living your word. They knew that they would not find him with women. They would not find him with anything. They came with the issue of resources. And Jesus said, paraphrasing, what is this embarrassment for now? He said, well, anyway, go to the fish. Catch that fish. Remove coin from it. And when you remove coin from it, Give the man and let him go. And then he says, blessed are the peacemakers. Do you know what is the reward of a peacemaker? He says they shall what? Watch this. Peace I give you. Jesus is speaking. My peace I give. Not as the world gives. Do you know how he gives us peace? He showed us the formula. 
give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god what belongs to god so when you hold a bible and you are serving god caesar will come for his coins every time you are lifting your voice to worship god caesar will come as bills caesar will come as school fees caesar will come as house project and he says the way i give peace is that i give you both a bible and a coin so that while you are worshiping me when caesar comes you give him his coin and let him go are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes sir. so while you are worshiping and lifting up the name of the lord here comes the landlord where is that stupid pastor i'm here with police to close your church and he says the way the way i give my peace is that while you are giving god what belongs to god i know caesar will come the tribute collectors will come so there is a provision in my economy to make sure caesar's coin is on your hand while you are worshiping so that while he comes you give to caesar that way you are a peacemaker hear me one of the greatest reasons why believers in this country today are turning away from the things of God is not fornication believe me when I tell you this it's not just immorality in terms of you know compromise with their bodies but the tribute collectors are coming to interrupt your worship so you stand to worship ah. we lift our hands to the great I am, who was and who is and is. And here comes your bill to interrupt your worship. Hey, this is the PTA letter. Your twins, they've increased the school fees from 100,000 to 150. And suddenly, hold on, please. Your worship becomes doubt and fear god are you still there you gave god what belonged to god but you could not give caesar what belonged to caesar and caesar will stand there to embarrass you i'm praying for somebody may god satisfy you early with his mercy in life in the name of jesus christ you see ba it takes time to know God. It takes time to learn the ways of God. It takes time to impact a generation. It takes time to pray. You pray five hours every day. Poor, won't you fail? One day, your wife will look at you and say, what kind of man did I marry? You'll be surprised you will not be able to pray again. So God says, I want your time but caesar also wants his coin and so you have to use your time and share it both for god and for caesar so god empowers you are we together i have seen what stress can do to men i've seen what stress can do to churches i've seen what financial stress can do to people the devil will come to tempt you with something you will reject it he will amplify the stress and come again and say i'm still here in case an ungodly man came and said marry me and i will change your life financially he said no 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 no. god already revealed to me that i'm going to serve him he will increase the stress it's your mother by yourself that will call you and say let me warn you if you bring anybody in this house that doesn't look like where we are going so no matter what God told you, that stress, will, there are many people in homes today that they should not be. Money took them there. There are many marriages that should not have scattered. Money, what guns could not do, money scattered it. Poverty is a dangerous thing. It's not about prosperity talk, my brothers and sisters. It's a strategy to destroy the saints. Some of you, you are seated here right now. Only God knows when your school fees, where your school fees is going to come from. 
You are a student, yet you are sending money home. So when they gave you a fellowship leadership, you could not receive it, yet you are anointed. And you know you should be serving there, but the stress on you cannot allow you. But things are changing. Things are changing. I pleaded with God. I said, I will never pastor and raise a people who are just spiritual and do not have the requisite level of financial influence. It is dangerous to work with people. The tendencies that come out of a man's heart when he's in financial difficulty, only God can help. The best of us can become a beast under financial stress. That's why the psalmist says, satisfy me early with your mercy. Satisfy me early. When you build your house at 70 years, it's not a testimony. That's mercy. There is a spirit in Africa that we must destroy. It is the spirit of lateness. Are we together? Please hear me. If you meet a young, vibrant person, how old are you? I am 22 years and you are already a preacher yes sir a master's holder yes sir married yes sir this car is your own yes sir this house is your own yes they say you must be a thief now please understand this now it is true that there is the law of process but there is a spirit we must destroy because what God is making out of you will make everyone around you a, a they will marvel and say, I knew you now. Was it not you that I saw last year? Listen, when you build a house at 60, I'm speaking respectfully. People say, Oh, that's good. That means it's proper. It's supposed to be like that. When you use your pension to pay your child's school fees. They say, correct, that's the way, it's all right, we're all humans. You see, those kinds of wise sayings, those statements look like they are nice, but they are demonic things. At age 33, Jesus had finished his assignment. 33, he turned the world upside down. By 33, he was done. I have fought, the, I have, I have, um, how, how did he say it? It is finished. 33. For someone at 33, you are not even born again. Are you seeing now? And it takes time to know God. At age 12, Jesus was at the temple. The, the doctors of the law, if they had their way, they would drive him. You are too small to know God. Wait until you are 30. It's a spirit. When you see a brilliant child at 15 who is doing well, people say, eh, he's too young. Just allow him first until that spirit makes him dull. And at 40, he's still finding out his left from his right. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The grace that can give people speed in life, may it come upon you. Hallelujah. You see a man of 60 years, 70 years, and a small boy of 12 years. And you see the labor. The man is shaking already. He's sick, but he has to pay the child's primary school fees. What sort of life is that? Because of this difficulty. An average graduate in Nigeria may not get a good job for the next 10 years after graduation and when you meet people they say it's all right it's, well, are you not seeing me it's like that you are even lucky that your own is after 10 years you got something small <laughs> in as much as i sympathize with these things it's a spirit that what you don't confront you will never conquer are we together the moment you see certain young people doing something great, they will say you're either a musician, a secular musician, or a uh, uh, footballer, thank you, a sportsman. You mean someone born again who knows God cannot hurry up in life? Is it a curse? 
Joash was king at age 8. Josiah was king at age 9. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. You lead me and guide me to the city up above. You lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. Listen, some of you, the time you should be born again, you were not born again. A man that gets born again at 40, you don't need advancement alone. You need restoration. Because already the time has gone. You give yourself another 5 to 10 years to know God and to grow and to be mentored. And then to understand the laws of life to succeed. You will succeed at 70. So he says, I can restore years. That canker worm, not situations, canker worm, palmer worm, caterpillar. Are we together? Yes. Imagine what will happen to your children by the time they are five years with the knowledge you have now. They will first get born again at two years. Filled with the Holy Spirit at two years. Are we together? By age seven, what you learned at 15, they already know. By 13, they've started their destiny. Because while they are in the womb, you will find out from God, what is my child going to become? You will not let him discover it after 35 years of an experience like Cain. Meandering destiny before you now find out that you were called. You joined police. You worked in the bank. You worked as, 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 as um, whatever it is. All of this, you were finding fulfillment before finally God said, how long will it take you to know I called you? It is powerful to find God early. Those who seek me early. There is a timing to it. Not all times are convenient. This is why you must appreciate the opportunity you are given by this great ministry. To mentor and invest Jesus into you at this level. Yes. Nobody outgrows the need to be guided. Let me give the last one. The last index that measures success is relationships. Now pay attention to this one. You are as successful as your relationships. Our world is yet to understand the power embedded in relationships. Relationships are advantageous connections. Please follow me. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. You got saved because of a relationship. You are in school today because of your relationship with a lecturer. And you are learning. It is your relationship with the Holy Spirit that continues to progress your knowledge. When God wants to honor you, he will bring quality relationships. Everybody say quality relationships. Now, the paradox is if you have too many friends, it's a sign that you don't have values. You need few friends and many relationships. Mm. <laughs> relationships don't have to subscribe to your value system. They are just connections. A destiny helper may be hedonistic and may be used by God momentarily, but a friend must subscribe to your value system. If you have many friends in your life, it's a sign that your standards are weak. Weak enough for anyone to be your friend. But you need relationships. Please look at me. You are as blessed as your relationships. I am here standing on your campground because of relationships. A baby comes to the earth because of relationships. 
you are not successful if you do not have relationships the clearest proof of favor is not money is the loyalty and the hearts of men when God gives a generation to hear you you are favored Is God speaking to us? You need advantageous relationships. There are men who may not have money today, but they don't have a need because their receipt rights paid for through relationships, not cash. Paid for through relationships. There are people today who are looking for money to build houses. There are people today whose relationships have become an investment. Listen to me. You need quality relationships. Quality relationships in your life. That means you must understand the laws of relationships. The Bible says he that wants friends must first show himself friendly. You must understand the law of honor. You must understand that the psychological need of any man and every man on earth is the need to be loved, the need to be valued, and the need to be appreciated. This must be at the back of your mind while you treat people. If you insult and violate this law, you will never rise. The law of honor, you've heard me say it. Second only to the law of encounter is one of the most powerful spiritual laws that I've had. I can begin to tell you stories today because of this. When we got to the redemption camp, thank God for pastor sam and a few of the people and i was so honored at the priority that they gave us and everything they made it a big deal my being there and i looked at the people i would have stupidly stood there and said oh they now acknowledge joshua selman but you understand relationships people forget what you tell them but they don't forget how you made them feel they are like elephants on that they will remember after 30 years and they are unforgiving about it if I come and stand here and I insult this church, insult your leaders, and make it look like everybody is unserious, I may never come here again. Let me show you why doors open once and never open again. One single law, dishonor. We do not understand the capacity to discern. Listen, gentlemen and ladies, hear me. It's true that you can fail a course and honor can upgrade your score. The lecturer can call you yes you failed yes sir i did honestly sir i've been I've, I've, i'm not a lazy student but i have a lot of family challenges and stress ah what is this ticker on you you're a member of this church are you a smart person he will ask you a question in passing and you answer and you say go the final year result will come out and you see you've graduated honor upgraded your score but another arrogant student will come there and say, it's my right. Please, I, I'm not stupid. I know my right. And the lecturer will look at him and say, you will stay here for the next four years. Please learn the things that I teach you. Success is a system. It's a system that you engage. I had the privilege of meeting our father before coming here and what warm reception he gave. And I was very careful to make sure that I honored him sincerely. Your leaders here have honored me with all my heart. They have, they have gone out of their way to demonstrate honor. It's the reason why every time they invite me, no matter, in fact, it's as if the protocol department already has, they just find out the date and keep their dates. No matter what happens, they keep it there. If it's four square, don't come their way. Honor preserved it like that. Listen, listen, learn what I teach you tonight and you will play life like a chess. Many people will say you are lucky, but you know what you are doing. You know, a few people see me and say, ah, apostle, God is lifting you, you are fortunate. And I say, oh boy, when you rise by knowledge, you don't fear where you are going. Because knowledge took you there to keep you. Wisdom and knowledge, the Bible says, will be the stability of your times. Is God speaking to someone? Yes, Success. Imagine what happens to you when you are on fire spiritually. 
Imagine what happens to you when you are enlightened intellectually. That the scope of your relevance is not just the pulpit. Don't drop the mic and look useless until Sunday. Be able to be relevant to a civilization. And David served his own generation with excellence and intelligence and understanding. Imagine that you are healthy and strong. Strong enough to see your children's children. Imagine that you are blessed enough to not think of money, but focus on God and his purposes. And imagine that you have the privilege to have quality relationships that become keys that open doors for you. That man is a success. I said, that man is a success. Show me a man who is only spiritually alive. He may have an advantage, but in this life, he will pay for it. Show me a man who ignores God, but is intellectually sound. He will go so far, but he will end up looking like his past. Show me a man who has a healthy body, who dissipates energy, eating well, adorning the physical body and forgetting God and forgetting his mind. I show you a man who will continue to flatter himself around the circle and remain there. Show me a man who all he's pursuing is money without this four. I show you a man who has found a job that will never pay him salary. The pursuit for money without these things. Show me a man who all he has is earthly relationships. He will now know that men are men. They will say, you are our king today. And they will say, crucify him tomorrow. The same men. Men will clap you today and stone you tomorrow and say, remember, I was the one who clapped yesterday. I've changed my mind. So when you want to be balanced, this message I am teaching you that you are receiving in one session is somebody's lifetime testimony. This is pain that someone spent his lifetime learning compressed in one encounter is why it is good to come to church. I was glad when they said unto me, the church is not a nuisance to society. Does what I have done to you tonight in these few minutes, I have redeemed your time. Now you know what to focus on. Ah, so success is not what I seek. I attract by who I'm becoming. So you focus on your destiny while everything gravitates towards you. Imagine if years ago I kept praying for square, I must stand on your altar. This is my desire. It's a foolish prayer. It's unnecessary. Growth already answered that prayer. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Listen, my brothers and my sisters hear me. We are going to pray shortly. There is nobody you see that you desire and you admire. They look like mysteries because of what you do not know. Growth is a system. Growth is a system. The difference between you today and our great fathers of faith, the difference between you today and a Benny Hinn, the difference between you today and a Maurice Sorulo, the difference between you today and a Dangote and Otedola, the difference is these systems. That means I may come from a background weak, beaten by life, but I can begin to rise like you are rising, one step after the other. For now, you are paying attention to your spiritual life. Don't worry. Let me tell you this as I prepare for us to pray. I apologize, I know our time is gone. Years ago, when we started with God on campus, it would be stupid at that level to start teaching on money and start teaching on family life. It's unnecessary. There are levels in your life where the only thing that should be your message is God. Fire. How to fast. How to know God. How to study scripture. Are we together? 
if you are in that fellowship and you are turning and looking at a sister you are really carnal because your mind should not even go there your assignment should be in the beginning god you come with fire that's the time you have the strength to pray you can look for one holiday time and spend three days dry because the glory of the young is their strength you will not always have that time i guarantee you today right now having a retreat is time i must beg god and have luxury for it was from mina to a conference in kaduna here and then i'm back i think all through this year maybe aside from the election period i've not had eight to nine days at home this year whereas there were days i was as free as nothing if i did not redeem those days these days would not come is God speaking to someone now you have the time some of you as young as you are you are snoring away your destiny your father is sleeping you are sleeping too your mentor is sleeping you are sleeping too that's the time to wake up and say I will sleep in the future but for now they say this fasting won't it kill you you say no there's money in the future that I will eat well from but for now God reveal yourself to me. God says you are going to be an evangelist and you, you get the map of the world in a paper and every night you are laying your hands on it. The nation so God. Today I get very surprised. Young people just start with God and the next thing they are, they, you come for fellowship as you are answering altar call. You are already looking at a sister. You are already looking at a brother. You, are, you see oh, this kind of, this, this upside down pathway is why people don't grow please hear what i'm teaching you are we together ask anybody our fathers would tell you when they started they did not know male and female they only knew god it was even god that had to tap them one day while they are praying and say hey, hey, hey relax father the nations mm -mm. that's your wife okay god i've seen but mm -mm. i'm not answering you again turn go and meet her can you be so focused on destiny some of us like money to an extent that's all you dream of that's all. no 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 take it step by step you are in hundred level you are in every club you are in every association you are in every society you are in every group whether it's occultic or whatever you think you are social any man of vision does not have that luxury of time you must choose the things that are needful your academics, God, and then fellowship. That's how visionary people start. As you adjust, you will now have time for other things. Please reprioritize your destiny this night. There are groups to resign from quickly. There are clubs and associations that your pocket money is 5,000 or 10,000. The due for that club is 2,000. You are the only one who is a student in that club. Resign this night. And settle down with God. Every night, challenge yourself. Whether it is raining or not, get up to your secret place. You are weak, but you are praying. Heaven is watching. My son, continue. This is the overseer of the ministry that will mentor the children. You are praying. You are a young lady here. Every night, Lord, that I will know you. And God says, this woman, this is the only kind of man that can marry her the kind of anointing this lady is working on is not somebody who is loitering around no this womb should bring a prophet not a human being are we together now yes this is how we rose ask anybody who has risen here a time must come in your life when you will not have time for anything again except god there are people who graduated i'm not saying to do it but there are people who graduated and because they got born again late they allocated one year to seek god alone alone no nothing to catch up and those people are on fire they are blessed today there are others who have been busy since they were young till now they have not done anything you can choose where you want to be i make up my mind to be balanced I will know him and serve him all my days until I see him. 
it's a vow and a commitment I've made in life and in death I love him more than anything ask him he's won my heart that's that's for sure I will never be offended in him number two I made up my mind that I would not stand before anybody on earth who will look at me as a nuisance whether you're a politician, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a hedonistic person, I don't care. I should be able to present God with a level of intelligence that will make you know that Christianity is a blessing, not a nuisance. And since I found out my background did not provide for that advantage, I outsourced it through passion. Sit down, buy the truth. Buy the truth. Don't give excuses. Buy the truth. Don't buy clothes, not with on. Buy books buy tapes sit down one trouser yes sir feed your mind please be careful don't say i'm a man of god everybody knows me i need to start dressing well who knows you who told you settle down all my scholarships as a student all my scholarships all there was not one that was spent for me for my personal no not at all it was books and books i had a small rechargeable every night i would sleep i would i bought this compendium of bible on tapes strong's concordance dake's bible all of these books the whole series kenyon hagin the fathers of faith in this nation i gathered them like this you would think that i want to build a museum because the vision i saw that version of me would be joking to believe god would take it there as I leave this place right now, after the grace, you go to my room there, you will find my laptop. There are already things to study. I'm not going back this night and go and sleep and say, oh, I have a session tomorrow. That level of laziness cannot... Look, let me tell you, it takes stamina to stand on some dimensions. It's not just anointing generically. The anointing needs a vessel to rest on. I'm showing you the labor dimension. I, I, I'm sorry I did not really get into my topic today. We have a session tomorrow. But this, there is a price for uncommon impact. Ask my people, did you know that as close as I am to all these guys, the team that travels with me, I never really have time one-on-one -on -one with them. They also themselves, as close as they are, they look forward to times when I'm free so that they can now ask their own questions. When we go inside there now, they may not see me again till tomorrow. Act like you have not achieved anything in life. Act like nobody has known you. Act like your name has not gone anywhere. Don't plateau at a level. No, sir. Champions don't stop. The only thing that stops them is death. Champions never arrive. Apostle Joshua Selman, you're a man of power. You're a man of miracles. To what degree? To what degree? If you pray for 100 barren women and 10 get healed, 10 over 100, what grade is that, students? Talk to me. So if you pride yourself and say, oh, I'm a healer, based on what? Listen, let me tell you, there are dimensions that kings will not come to you. You have to press. Kings don't come to your light. They come to the brightness of your rising. It's Gentiles that come to your light. There is no amount of tiredness that sustains the power to distract me. If I miss out on my prayer time, I have a system of discipline on myself to make it back. Is it all right that I'm, I'm a bit open with you like this? Because many people, we, we like results. Behind results, there is a price you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine. Oh God, use me. Let me bless the nations. I agree. But my brothers and my sisters, you need to build stamina.
the remnant of the house of Jacob will bear root downwards and then will bear fruit upwards. We are going to have a few minutes to pray. Tomorrow I'll touch on the topic that I came with. But hear me. <laughs> You're complaining already. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have to. <laughs> you want a vigil? We'll not do it. No, 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 no. We have to be fair. I know you are motivated by what I'm saying, but you have to sleep. Listen. My, my dear ones, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, we are going to hear me. Hear me. We are going to pray. Tonight, I know that I just shared with you a few things to challenge you. Tonight is inspiration and motivation. Why? Because many of us are at points in our lives and our destinies where if you get it right now, you have gotten it right forever. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp down your growth. We are trusting God for a generation in Foursquare that will be so young men who are extremely anointed and successful, not anointed and struggling. Hmm. That a day in the nearest future will come in Foursquare here where it is, it will be a gathering of kings. You will see someone doing ushering. You will think it's because he's not employed until you see the company he runs. And when it's time to pray, he's rolling on the ground. That in itself is a sermon to someone who doesn't love God. I vow to myself that I will never lead weak people. It is dangerous to lead weak people. My greatly revered mentor who had gone to be with the Lord, bless his soul, Dr. Miles Munro, he shared and he said, a true leader does not maintain followers. He turns followers to leaders and leaders to agents of change. Listen to me. Seated in this place right now are the prophets of the next season. Seated in this place right now are the apostles of the next season. You have seen it in your dreams. I'm not telling you what you don't know. Seated here are the next Reinhard Bonkers. Reinhard Bonkers is already on his way. That belong to a generation. But are you ready for it? Or will it pass you and look for someone else? Did you know Bible students that the first person God called was not Abraham? Abraham's destiny was his father's. Read your Bible. The person who was called was Terah. And he missed out on it. And the mandate shifted to Abraham. Who would later become Abraham the father of nations. No one will take my place in destiny. No. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will dim. Coming after me. No wall you will kick down. Lie you will tear down. Coming after me. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will coming after me. Oh, the young, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down Leaving 99 I couldn't earn it And I don't deserve it Oh, the overwhelming Can we spend five minutes to pray? I'm going to allow you, I will call and then give us a few prayer points. But in the next two minutes, I want to leave everybody in this campground with God alone. 
for the next two minutes find a corner and cry lord i will not fail destiny there are men and women tied to my grace is there someone who can cry to god ah! come on four square cry to the god of heaven let me encounter destiny no shadow you would light up coming after me no mountain you won't kick down coming after me i will not fail destiny oh god you have called me to be a prophet to the nations i may not look like it but let tonight be like the threshing floor of naboth Sisters, pray. Where are the Catherine Kumans that must arise? Where are the Emmy Semple McPhersons? Eli is calling Samuel. Where are you? Pray, pray, pray tonight. Lord, pour out your spirit. Is there someone praying? Oh no. The people of the earth. Ah. Let your sons and daughters speak your words of prophecy send us dreams and visions reveal the secret of your heart Lord, our world is waiting. Let creation see the coming of your day. There's gonna be a great awakening. Hey, there's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening And everyone who calls on Jesus They will be saved Cry to the Lord Pray I surrender all to you Everything I give to you I'm withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing yeah. Withholding nothing Will you give your heart away? Yeah. Will you give your heart away so he can use you? Will you give your time away? Will you give your 
time away. So and I. Desperate for you. Few minutes and we're done tonight. Hey. And I, I'm lost without you. Lift up a cry. Lord, I will not fail destiny. There are generations tied to my grace. There are generations tied to my obedience. People will not go to hell because I failed. Creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Ladies, pray. Gentlemen, pray. I may be the first from my family, but here I come. Here I come in the name of the Lord God of heaven. Please pray. Please pray. A few minutes and we're done. You're not wasting your time. You are negotiating with destiny. You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I see You are my only Lord I'm seeking you as a precious joy Not to give up, I'll be a fool You are my only Lord Sing Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. hallelujah now i want you to mention the five areas that i lifted and pray them into your life christ must be represented in this area spiritually fresh fire mentally i will be transformed enough to draw to my life the kind of kingdom influence that is desired to lift the name of jesus I live long and strong this body is a gift from God to me I will not destroy my body with drunkenness are you praying I will not destroy my body with anything that can tear me down adultery fornication drunkenness this body is a gift and the only host that can keep my spirit alive here pray from the depth of your heart yes you are God and you reign forever and ever you are the Lord of yes you are God and you reign forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah please don't be tired bear with me the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside is someone ready to pray father whatever will make me lose in destiny cut it away 
this night let there be a circumcision if it's a wrong relationship let it leave my life if it's an addiction let it be broken by the grace of god someone serious with your destiny cry if it's anger let it leave my life if it's laziness it must leave my destiny I'm ready to get to the place of destiny no price is too great Hallelujah. 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 Hopefully my session, there's no time to minister to people now and pray for the sick. Tomorrow we'll leave that for the morning. Our minister prophesy over your life. We still have a session so that I'll allow you sleep. But there's just one last prayer. We'll pray to round this. Father, the kind of hunger that will attract the mantle for a generation listen to me please not a mantle for a congregation not a mantle for a parish lord the kind of hunger that will make you give me what you gave reinhard bonke the kind of hunger that will make you give me what you gave the generals let that baptism happen to me now if someone praying lift your voice and cry for everyone that ask it, receive it. Someone you are praying for a generational mantle. The kind of hunger, oh God, that money cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that fame cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that the achievement in life cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that the applause of men cannot satisfy. The kind of hunger that even my results cannot satisfy. Someone is crying. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Lord, I know I'm a prophet. I have prophesied, but I'm not satisfied. Greater hunger. I'm an apostle, but greater hunger. I'm a first class student, and I'm grateful for it. But I cry for something greater, oh God. I'm already in ministry. I prayed for a woman the other day, and she had a miracle, but I'm not satisfied. Give me something for a generation, oh God. Please pray. Pray. Take away spiritual mediocrity. The hunger for a generation. Lord, they call me great, but I need a real mantle from heaven. I want to represent God to a generation, not just a church. minutes and we're done two minutes of a heartfelt cry four square are you praying god is searching men looking for men in this end time lord i thank you for my result in ministry but i'm tired of this level tired of this level thank you for my results in business but i'm tired of this level as a campus fellowship president as a prayer secretary as a Bible study secretary, as a, as a zonal leader, thank you for where you have taken me, but I refuse to let you go tonight. You must place something upon my destiny that is generational. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, 
we wait on you for fire Lord we wait on you Hallelujah. Please listen. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be, I will share with you a few things, but tomorrow's meeting will be an impartation. There has to be a transfer. Some of you, what you saw in your dreams, what you have seen in your visions for many years, it's time for something to come upon your life that a generation will know that the hand of God is upon you. So while you go back to eat and to sleep, don't be carried away and start gisting and talking as if you are not in the presence of God. Spiritualize your mind. As you go eat, just exchange pleasantries, go to bed. Wake up with a hunger tomorrow and write it that today is the day when this mantle for my destiny comes. Today is the day when that grace I saw in the dream comes. Today is the day. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.